When a person is in captivity, it means they are being held enslaved, imprisoned, or confined. The key thing to remember about captivities is that prisoners are not allowed to go home. For example, our brothers and sisters in the prison system are in captivity because they cannot go home. They can't just unlock the doors and walk out for fresh air like you and I can. Another way to know when someone is in captivity, little Hebrews, is the restrictions that are also placed on them. Captives aren't allowed to do what the general population, or that means everybody, are able to do. Not only are prisoners not allowed to go home, but they cannot eat the same foods that we eat, wear the same clothes. That's why you always see them with the with these clothes on here, the orange and the um, different color uh, uniforms, because they can't wear regular clothes. They can't even speak the same language. Women prisoners, for example, can't even wear earrings like their sisters outside of captivity because it is said that they can use them as weapons. People in captivity are also taken for granted. This means that people use them, mistreat them, and do not give them what is owed to them. A lot of prisoners work very hard for little or no pay. Most of the shoes or the clothes that, and, and the flags that people wave and the things that people wear were made by prisoners for as little as cents on the dollar, although it is sold for hundreds. When you force people to work without allowing them to benefit from that work, it means that you've taken them for granted. The curses, on the other hand, is a punishment for being disobedient. This punishment can occur at any time when our people are disobedient. Although while in captivity we're cursed, we do not have to be in captivity to be cursed. For example, when you're being punished by mommy and daddy, sometimes they may put you in a form of captivity by not allowing you to come out of your room. But you don't have to be on punishment, captivity, to be punished by your parents. The only thing you have to do to be punished is to be disobedient. Let's go back to the prisoners. One of the things about being in prison, little Hebrews, is that even if you're in prison, there are still very strict rules to follow. But sometimes prisoners are given special rewards for being good. For example, in this picture here, the man has had the opportunity of being able to play and be silly with his children, something that is not usually offered to uh, men in the prison system. They may have visits, but they aren't usually able to have as much fun as this man is obviously having. Or their sentence may even be shortened for good behavior. Their sentence, little Hebrews, is just the time that they're spending in prison, so that may be cut short for good behavior. But other times, sometimes prisoners are not so good, and they can be punished by allowing some of their good things to be taken away until they're good again, such as those who have to have what little space they do possess to be taken away, and they are put into what they call solitary confinement. Which just means, little Hebrews, that they have to stay in a real small space, kind of like a closet, by themselves for days at a time. What little space they had in their cells, even that is taken away, and they're given a much smaller space in return. So, those of us following Yah, we are still in captivity, but we're not cursed anymore because we're being obedient to Yah's rules. So, although as a nation we're still on punishment, like the prisoners, we're still being blessed with understanding because of good behavior. We can't go home yet, but at least we can still find peace and love as a reward for being such good little children. But if we're bad little stiff necks, then the little bit of good Yah allowed us to have in captivity, it can be taken away. Speaking of punishments, you yourself may have often wondered about this year 2019. Many of you have learned and studied long enough to understand that the first Israelites were brought to the Americas in 1619, as you learned in your recent 12 tribes lesson. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, Yah tells Father Abraham that his seed will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and they will serve and afflict them 400 years. 
Yah is telling Abraham that his future generation will be in prison and treated badly in this prison for 400 years. Yah is saying that he will both make Abraham see captives and that he will also punish them while they are captives for that 400 year period. 400 years from 1619 is 2019. It will mark the 400th year we've been enslaved to this country. In 2019, Father Yah will allow us to come out of our prison. In so doing, 2019 becomes the end of our American captivity. But for the disobedient of our people, it is not the end of the curse. Although Yah will give us the keys to come out, those who are still being bad will continue to be punished. The major thing to take back from this lesson, little Hebrews, is not to expect poverty and struggle to stop among the disobedient of our people in 2019. The major difference between the curse and the captivity is that the captivity is a bondage that has a time limit attached to it. Being in prison 400 years, for example. But the curse is a condition. This condition is based on a decision of whether we want to be obedient or disobedient. If your mom and dad let you come out of your room, but you're still being bad, you will continue to be punished, although you are allowed to come out of your room. In other words, obedience nullifies or breaks the curse, while disobedience prolongs the curse. But they trespassed against Yah of their fathers, and whored after the gods of the peoples of the land, whom Yah had destroyed before them. So Yah of Yisrael stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, even the spirit of Tiglath, Pilsar, king of Assyria. And he took the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh into exile, and brought them to Hala and Habor and Hara. In the river of Gozan until this day. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath, Pelzar, king of Assyria, came and took Ayan and Abel, Beth Maaka, and Yonawah, and Kadesh, and Hatsar, and Gilead, and Galil, all the land of Naphtali, and took them into exile to Asher or Assyria. Little Hebrews, because the northern tribes were wicked, Yah put them in prison to the Assyrians. Assyria began invading and conquering parts of Israel between 722 and 720 BCE, where the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and eastern half-tribe of Manasseh were carried captive, as we just read, to Hala, Habar, and Hatsar. It finished with the destruction of Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom. So basically, little Hebrews, Yah had sent the tribes to jail to the Assyrians. They were now held captive, imprisoned to the Assyrians. And the sovereign of Assyria went through all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it for three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, the sovereign of Assyria captured Samaria and exiled Israel to Assyria and settled them in Hala and Habar, the river of Gozan, and in the city of the Medes. Now this came to be because the children of Israel had sinned against Yah their power, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, sovereign of Egypt, and feared other mighty ones and walked on the laws of the Gentiles, whom Yah had dispossessed from before the children of Israel, and of the sovereigns of Israel that they had made. So not only did the ten tribes have to go to jail to the Assyrians, but Yah also made sure they were punished while in jail. So we see here the connection between disobedience, the captivity, and the curse. But let us see the disconnection. That is, we don't have to be in captivity to be cursed. And we don't have to be cursed in captivity.